Hi everyone, it's Rio Cloudsick. In today's session, we'll look at the rollout for mandatory MFA across Microsoft Azure, Microsoft Entra, and Microsoft Intune Admin Centers. If you've accessed Microsoft Azure or the Microsoft 365 Admin Center in the last two to three weeks, then you would have noticed a new notification around enforcement of MFA for all user accounts across all admin consoles. The notification can be found in Service Health within Microsoft Azure itself under Health Advisories, or if you were to navigate to the Microsoft 365 Admin Center and navigate to Service Health itself and filter via Service Type, MFA, you would also find it there. The Service Health is all around enabling multi-factor authentication for your tenant by 15th of October 2024. And this is broken down into two phases, phase one and phase two, and there's time scales associated to both those phases. Alternatively, if you were to scroll up to where we see the ribbon and select notifications, you will see a, a tooltip here which says multi-factor authentication required. All users are required to use multi-factor authentication to access the Azure portal beginning 15th of October 2024. And I'm able to click manage multi-factor authentication. So why is Microsoft mandating the use of multi-factor authentication? This is nothing new. We're trying to align our technologies and our infrastructure to the zero trust methodology. And we're also trying to adopt Microsoft's approach to, to least privilege. As cyber attacks become more and more frequent, sophisticated and damaging, protecting identities has never been this crucial for not just you, but also Microsoft. Once again, this aligns with Microsoft Zero Trust and their pledge to invest $20 billion in security over the next five years. So to de demystify you know, how this is going to affect you as an administrator, the timescales around the enforcement, you know, can we postpone the enforcement of such? And what happens to the likes of service accounts where in which they may be um, integrated with a third party of such? So if we start off with, you know, the, the, the overview and the high level timescale, on 15th of August 2024, Microsoft announced they would introduce mandatory MFA for all users accessing Azure starting the second half of 2024. So this will begin with phase one, which will begin with signings in, into the Azure portal, entry portal and into an admin center. So any users accessing these given portals and executing these particular read write commands, albeit if that be uh, create, read, update or delete, um, all user accounts will be affected if they perform those operations. Phase two will extend MFA to the Azure CLI Okay, in which we see in Microsoft Azure itself, if we're not gonna if we're not gonna use Azure PowerShell, but it will also affect Azure PowerShell moving forward as well as the Azure mobile app and infrastructure as a code. And phase two will begin early 2025. In terms of notifications um, across the, the Microsoft 365 services and to you as a global administrator, yes, you as a global administ administrator will receive a message notification or sorry, an email notification 60 days in advance. And this will be sent via email or displayed within the admin portals as you see above. You will also have a grace period between 15th of August and 15th of October in which phase one is being introduced, uh, which will be available within the notification itself, allowing global admins to postpone enforcement. Okay. And the way in which we postpone enforcement is, is we click on the notification itself and you will see an option for post postpone enforcement down below in which if I was to select yes, you'll say, okay, users will need to use MFA to access the Azure portal, uh, Microsoft Entry Admin Center and Intune Admin Center beginning 15th of March, 2025. So you've actually postponed the enforcement uh, a couple of months down the line. But after such time, yes, once more, it will be mandated. However, to get to this point and to be able to postpone enforcement, your global administrator account you're using to postpone the enforcement needs elevated access over your Microsoft Azure subscriptions um, as well as uh, managed groups. Um, so we need to give it the user access administrator role, uh, which is done through Microsoft Entra Admin Center itself. So the way in which we do this is we scroll up to where we see Microsoft Entra via entra.microsoft.com. We select identity, overview, and then where we see properties, where we'd normally go to enforce security defaults, which we'll get to in a second, 
we see here access management for Azure resources. It says Rio Hindle, which is uh, admin at, which is my account, which is my UPN, can manage access to all Azure subscriptions and management groups in this tenant. And like I said, all this is given my user account as user access administrator over the given um, Azure subscription and management groups in this tenant. And I need to select yes. If this was selected to um, the toggle no or off, I wouldn't be able to postpone the enforcement. So please make sure you've enabled this for your given global administrator account. Okay, um, some frequently asked questions before we um, showcase on how we would enforce multi-factor verification if we haven't already done so. Like I said, MFA stops like 99.999% of um, uh, cyber attacks uh, through identity theft. Of course, there is um, adversary in the middle and um, token theft, but there are also uh, precautions we can put in place as well uh, to reduce exposure in those 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 parts. Um, but in terms of frequently asked questions, yes, you can use an external MFA uh, provider um, as long as they're fully federated with Microsoft Entry ID and they're sending an MFA claim token to Entry ID, then that will suffice in terms of, you know, uh, the, the mandatory MFA requirement. Um, and two, if you've got service accounts, uh, which are just normal user accounts, but user service accounts uh, with either a long string of password or... Um, or whatnot, then they need to be migrated to, to workload identity, such as a, a service principal, okay, or an identity workload of such. Okay, um, that's just what it is. Of course, if you have Breakdash Glass accounts, uh, for example, you may want to use um, the likes of Fido2 tokens um, or pass keys. Okay, uh, but in terms of enforcement of MFA, um, of course, we can enforce uh, MFA via security defaults, like I said in the property section in Enter ID, where we can press manage security defaults and set this to um, enabled. Of course, the, the pitfall to security defaults is uh, you know, less flexibility in terms of um, segmenting users in terms of enforcement. Um, you can't decipher what authentication method you want users to use. It will just use the standardized authenticator app. Um, and it's just a free tier of enforcement of multi-factor authentication. However, if you were to use conditional access of such, this is the recommended way of um, enforcement of multi-factor authentication. But of course, this requires an Enter ID P1 license, P2 if you're using um, identity protection. Okay, um, so the way in which we can enforce MFA, which I've done, uh, you know, I've done plenty of videos in the past around enforcement of MFA using conditional access, is we can create a, um, a policy from template in which we can require MFA for all admins. Uh, but in this case, it's going to be a requirement for all users in terms of this mandatory enforcement. So we may want to use this template for requirement MFA for all users. And then you can view and then you can enforce. Alternatively, if you don't want to use the templates and you want to customize um, to your liking, you can create a new policy and start from scratch in which you would, of course, scope out the assignment scope, uh, the conditions to satisfy, and then the access controls around that, which may be... I want to require use of strong authentication such as fish and resistant, which may be the use of Windows Hello for Business, um, FIDO2, um, any of the FIDO2 Alliance keys, etc. etc. And for the time being, once you are in that grace period, you could put the conditional access policies and reports only and report using the, the, the signing logs of such, or you can enforce straight from the bat. It's totally up to you. But I think first things first, before you start, you know, worrying yourselves, um, go and sift through the signing logs. So that's the entry signing logs and just see what users are actually accessing the Microsoft Azure portal, the Intune portal, the entry portal. Because like I said, this is scoped organizational wide, i.e. this is going to affect all users, but only the users who are accessing these given um, admin portals. OK, so if you do have a service account there, but it's not using the likes of Intune Admin Center or Enter Admin Center or um, um, any of the, the admin centers I specified, then you're fine. You can leave as is. Uh, but any user accounts who are accessing the admin portals and like I said, moving towards early next year where we start looking at phase two, where they'll be targeting Azure CLI and Azure PowerShell, then yes, you will need to, to, to mandate MFA. Um, one more thing before before I leave you guys is um, if we were to scroll down to protection or auth methods, there is an option here for registration campaign. I've done a video in the past around registration campaign, and this gives that that flexibility to say, okay, um, users, we're going to be enforcing MFA across your user accounts. You've got 
amount of days to, to snooze this enforcement until it's mandated. You can give your, your users such as like a 7 to 14 day buffer in which they need to enforce MFA. And of course, uh, for registration campaign um, only, right, you can only enforce um, Microsoft Authenticator wrap. But if you were not to use the, uh, the registration campaign, you can use the auth methods in here in which you can start toggling on and off the, the, the particular auth methods you want to, to push out to your given users. Of course, recommendation is the phishing resistant methods such as Fido2, Hello, Windows Hello for Business, um, the hardware auth tokens, that kind of stuff. Uh, but but down level to that would be, the, of course, the Authenticator app, which most people, most organizations use. Um, try to steer away from uh, the use of telephone call, SMS. Um, the, the, you know, the, the, they're very much... Um, um, they're, they're very easy to be compromised of such. Okay. Um, but any questions, please do let me know. This is just a quick video on the, the MFA enforcement across the, the admin portals because I know there's a lot of information out there in the tech community um, as well as on the, the, the Microsoft documentation. It's really hard sometimes just to demystify the timescales um, as well as, you know, what do you need to do as an administrator? So thank you. Bye-bye.